Papa Squatch. Next to the fire. And enjoy the... <coughs> and enjoy the show. Mariana, o quarteirão continua todo cercado por policiais militares. Nós estamos afastados por orientação da polícia. Show me the brand. Luis M. Martin. Ma 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 wait, Martini? Is this a Martini? Focus. Yeah. Luis M. Martini. Cabernet Sauvignon. <coughs> Deste ponto aqui é possível avistar apenas a red wine tastes like ass. Momento... Yeah, you're uncultured, all right? You haven't had a good red wine. <laughs> no one pronounces French like pig, that's for sure. What do you mean? That's correct. Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> Shut up. O rapaz se encontra com as duas adolescentes. It's Tuesday, October 14th, 2008. As television crews arrive on the scene of an unfolding news event occurring in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a camera is trained up at the third story apartment unit where two young girls are being held captive. The ordeal was already developing into one of the longest hostage situations the area had ever seen, as it now entered its 18th grueling hour. However, there was optimism at the time, as negotiations between the hostage taker and law enforcement were ongoing, and the local news station speculated that they would soon be covering a peaceful <clears throat> resolution to this episode. Though uh -oh. they couldn't have been more wrong. Uh -oh. Instead, this single news report was merely the first domino to fall, leading to a chain reaction unlike anything we've ever seen in the world of television. As little did this news station and all the others en route to cover <clears throat> this in past know. Dude, some of these events, it's just like, how the fuck have I never heard of this? Like, so, some of these, like, you would think that they're such a big deal that you would just hear about it. You know? I mean, I know it's older, so I guess, I don't know. But they would have a say in how the story ends. <clears throat> this is the story of the Eloa Pimentel hostage incident, or as it's <clears throat> since come to be known, the darkest moment in television history. Vai aproveitar esse momento que a gente sabe que os, que os três estão assistindo. Olha, Lindeberg, é, somos um amigo da família. Eu, eu queria falar pra minha mãe que eu amo ela. E meu pai também. Ai, ah, é. Before we fully dive down this rabbit hole, I want to give a major oh! thank you to today's sponsor. I got sponsored by Beam too, dude. <clears throat> Guys, straight up, Beam is kind of fire. Damn, Nick's looking handsome as fuck. Hold up, dude. Ninety-three percent of participants. Yo, he's kind of dripped out. Got the nice facial hair, the glasses, the the slick back hair. Hold up, he's looking dapper as fuck. Damn. Looking clean, bro. All right, wait, hold up. Well, you guys get the code. Get the code. <clears throat> Dude, straight beam is fire. If you guys didn't use my code, use his cuz be beam's actually really good. I fuck with that. I I still use it occasionally. They're all auto applied, so no codes necessary. And I hope that you guys What is it? Oh yeah. <clears throat> I probably should have told you guys. It's hot chocolate. But it has like melatonin and other uh, shit in it that help you sleep, and you drink it when you, before you go to bed, and you're out like a light, dude. And dude, just having like a, a hot cocoa before bed, and it tastes good. Like I know you're probably thinking, oh, it's probably like tastes like shit because it has all this. No, it tastes like a good ass hot chocolate. Honestly, better than the shit you, you know, the store bought packaged shit. Really good, honestly. <clears throat> Little expensive, I'll admit, but I mean, if if you're having trouble sleeping and you want a hot cocoa before bed and you want to fix your sleep, that's your go-to right Let's there. Enjoy it as much as I do. <clears throat> it was a warm, muggy Wait. Monday afternoon. Reveal Mo the QR code. What? Oh, fuck. There. Scan. Does it actually work? Yes. 
That's coming from someone who has been sponsored by them before and use it occasionally now, even after getting sponsored by them. Okay. Support your fellow all auto applies, so no code necessary. And I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as I do. <clears throat> It was a warm, muggy Monday afternoon. Most residents across Sao Paulo had been busy starting off their work week as 15-year-old Eloa Cristina Pimentel arrived home from school for the day. Best described as a fun-loving, good-natured kid, Eloa excelled in her studies, where she met her closest friend, Nayara de Silva. And as she entered her family's apartment <coughs> that day, she did so with Nayara by her side, as well as two other male friends, Legayo Viala de Oliveria and Victor de la Compass with a group gathering together to work on a school project until they heard the sound of rustling at the door. By this point, Eloa's parents Anna and Aldo had been busy at work, while her brother Douglas had stayed after school, meaning that the sound they had just heard couldn't have come from either of them. With Eloa's confusion quickly turning to fear as the door was pushed in and then broke completely open revealing the source of the sound. Jeff the killer. Standing there was 22-year-old <clears throat> Lindenberg Fernandez Elvis, <laughs> a man who Eloa had come to know all too well. Uh-oh, angry boy. Almost three years before, the then 12-year-old Eloa had caught the eye of Lindenberg. If I can't have you, no one can. Is this going to be one of those situations? Who at that time was already 19 years old. <clears throat> Though despite this glaring age gap, the two would fall in love with each other and proceed to date for the next two years and seven months, a period of time that was anything but smooth sailing. By this point, Lindenberg had become well-known locally for his temper, with most describing him as a hothead and incredibly aggressive, uh, which Iloa would come to realize firsthand, as he quickly grew jealous of seemingly anything and everything Iloa would do without him. On one occasion, Lindenberg had even stalked Eloa when she was out for a walk, following her every movement across town, before he'd eventually catch her sitting alone at the bus stop. This, for whatever reason, enraged him, and he would go on to confront her both verbally and physically, with it being- For sitting at a bus stop? Being reported that Lindenberg <clears throat> had attacked her not only on this occasion, but likely on several others as well. And after over two and a half years of dating, Eloa had finally had enough. Recognizing that Lindenberg couldn't be fixed, or at least not by her, and so she broke up with him. I can fix some mentality. But this was something that Lindenberg just couldn't accept. As oh it God, dude, these fucking chads, man. If I can't have you, no one can. There's so many of them. There's so fucking many of these weirdos. In his mind, life without <clears throat> Eloa was no life at all, and he had to do something about it. Now, Lindenberg stood in the doorway facing the girl who had broke his heart just months before, with his pistol pointed directly at her. Eloa immediately screamed, but was silenced by Lindenberg, who slapped her across the face, before going on to express frustration towards the other three in the group as they weren't supposed to be there. They were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, and yet he claimed that this would not spare them from his wrath. He was there to kill Eloa and himself, and anyone else who might stand in his way. Though he seemed to be in no rush to do so, as he forced the four teenagers onto a bed and forbade any of them from talking, before he would stand there and wait for hours weighing his options. Until he too heard the sound of rustling at the door. It was Aldo, Eloa's father, who had arrived home from work only to find Eloa's brother Douglas sitting oh, outside the front door. Oh no, Douglas had Dad! gotten home over an hour before, only to find the door locked and the inside deathly quiet, forcing him to wait for his father to arrive <clears throat> home with the keys, all the while having no inclination that inside, his own sister was being held at gunpoint. As Aldo approached the door, Lindenberg would begin yelling, shouting at him to back away, and that he had his daughter and her friends inside marking the official beginning of the standoff. Oh, he didn't go in. This would arrive okay. almost immediately to the scene. I honestly thought it was going to be like a situation where he walks in and gets shot or something. Oh, thank God. But they would quickly realize just how daunting the task <coughs> before them was. Lindenberg was more unwell than they could have ever imagined, with his temper proving to be their biggest obstacle during that first day. 
as in some instances he was actually receptive to negotiations, even allowing the release of the two boys inside, before he would suddenly shut down and become enraged, seemingly out of nowhere. At one point, he even fired a shot through the front door at a passing civilian, incorrectly believing that they were trying to interfere. One minute he was hot, and the next he was cold. And as these tense minutes turned to hours, the reality of the situation for these negotiators became apparent. One wrong statement, even one wrong word, could cause everything to come crashing down. It was a fragile ordeal, and the following day, these negotiations would only become more complicated. A gente vai falar agora de um caso de violência que está acontecendo neste momento em Santo André, no ABC Paulista. Um jovem mantém a ex-namorada e a amiga dela reféns. A polícia cercou o conjunto habitacional onde estão os reféns e a repórter Graciela Andrade está lá no local. Conta pra gente qual é a situação nesse momento, Graciela. During the local 7 a.m. news that following morning, the first reporter would arrive to the scene to document this developing story. In the footage, we can see the massive police presence and the window of the apartment where Lindenberg was holding the two girls. <clears throat> and almost immediately, the story it's was- a SWAT alternative for sex fuck's sakes. Dude, if they, if they go in, like knocking down the door and shit, like he's just gonna shoot him. Like that's all that's gonna happen. Like if they try to just break in and try to save him, the dude's just gonna start shooting him. That's it. It's met with a skyrocketing number of viewers <clears throat> and soaring ratings that producers could only dream of. With this single report- Chat, what are you doing? I'm trying to watch the video, you're so distracted. Yeah, this happens occasionally where chat starts uh, going on a tangent of something completely off topic from what we're talking about. And then everyone in chat starts getting confused because everyone's watching the video and then someone's just talking about how their dog died yesterday or something. And then everyone's just left in confusion. <laughs> <clears throat> they had just struck television gold. And suddenly, other stations and dozens of reporters began flocking to the scene to capture a piece of this unfolding drama in real time. It seemed like in an instant, all of Brazil was now tuned into their TV. Skim milk or chocolate milk? How about shut the fuck up milk and watch the video milk? And waiting to see what would happen next. And How about I squeeze some of my milk out of my nips and hand it to you so you shut the fuck up and drink a little bit of milk and fucking... Sh shut the fuck up. Among those viewers was Lindenberg himself. Recognizing that the news was starting to take note of his story and that the area was now swarming with cameras waiting on his every move, Lindenberg's behavior began to grow more erratic. At one point, he forced Eloa to the window, standing behind her and demanding that she give the cameras a thumbs up <laughs> in order Not to let the people milky, at home know milky. that she was okay and that Lindenberg wasn't hurting her. Though soon after, he would approach another window, this time holding his revolver, and without warning, begin firing randomly at the street below, Jesus in the direction Christ. of the news crews. Thankfully, again, no one was hurt by these shots, but it was becoming evident that Lindenberg was almost putting on a show for the cameras. And now that he was feeling like the star of the show... He yep. Yeah, I was about... To, I was actually about to mention that earlier. I was like, I feel like he's gonna start thinking that, you know... Like, oh, I'm, I'm the guy, you know? It's me. They're talking about me. He was growing less and less interested <clears throat> in working with negotiators. And they recognized this too, and knew that they had to do something to force Lindenberg to continue working with them, which led to their decision to cut power to the unit, leaving Lindenberg in the dark, without air conditioning, and unable to watch the television. <laughs> As a result, Lindenberg went ballistic, striking Eloa while on the phone with negotiators. Though despite his initial reaction, this move actually ended up working, as Nayara was eventually released under the condition that the power be restored, which meant that Lindenberg was now down to just one hostage, oh God. the person that he had sought out from the very beginning. <clears throat> the whole reason- We're only seeing pictures of her, so I'm getting concerned. He was there. As the sun set on that Tuesday evening and the standoff passed its 40th hour, some remained positive, while others viewed the whole thing as helpless. 
but whatever opinions those in the air hey chat i have a, I have a little, little secret uh, shut the fuck up shut up shut up and watch the damn video god damn you guys are having shut up shut up shut up swear to god Area had at the time, it's safe to say that no one could have expected the baffling turn that this case Shut was up, headed bitch. for. <laughs> just oh the following day. Oh this is why, this is why I want to get rid of that. Call me asparagus. It was 1.30 p.m. on Wednesday the 15th, the third day of Eloa's captivity, when suddenly, inside that quiet apartment building, <clears throat> the silence would be interrupted by the ringing of a telephone. Lindenberg rushed to pick it up, expecting it to be the negotiator who he had been speaking with the previous day, but instead, he heard a different voice. Lindenberg, tá tudo bem aí? É. Oi, Lindenberg, é, somos um amigo da família, a gente queria saber se tá tudo bem, só isso. Lindenberg é Luiz Guerra, tudo bem? Somos conhecidos da... Luiz Guerra. The news? The news called the goddamn shooter? Are you serious? Dude. Oh my god, dude. They're so fucking stupid. Oh, they're so fucking stupid, man. Dude, this is why I always say the news is so fucking dumb. Like, every news outlet is just stupid, man. <clears throat> Sou da Sônia Abrão, repórter da Sônia Abrão. A gente só tá em nome da sua família, porque sua mãe está desesperada. A gente quer saber se tá tudo bem, só isso. Acting without the permission of the police or Eloa's family, a reporter named Luis Guerra from the Sonia Abrero news station managed to track down the apartment's phone number and call Lindenberg while in the middle of this active hostage situation. It's not hard to understand why this is such a terrible idea, as we already know that Lindenberg was highly emotional and wow. could be set off on a rampage with just a single word. And yet, Luis had uh... called anyway, and he was clearly unprepared to handle an interview of this magnitude, as he nervously starts by- You guys, you wanna know what a, be a good idea would be great news? We call a crazed dude with the gun holding his girlfriend hostage, planning on killing her. Uh, dude, it'd be such good news. It'd be such good news. First lying to Lindenberg, claiming to be a friend <clears throat> of his family, before eventually revealing that he was actually a reporter and that their phone conversation would be played for the world to hear. Throughout this nearly eight minute long phone call, what could possibly go wrong? Further and further, even at one point speaking directly to Eloa. Hello. Oi, Eloa, Luis Guerra da Sonia Brown, tudo bem? Hey, Aloha, I know you're being held by gunpoint right now. Would you like to do an interview? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah I, I understand that you're being held by gunpoint and things are kind of bad, but uh, how's family life? Oh, yeah, that's pretty tough that uh, he's holding a gun at you and he's hit you in the head with the gun. Um, what do you plan to do next in life if, if you survive this? Like, what? what the fuck are you doing, dude? What? <clears throat> Luiz Guerra, repórter da Sônia Abrão, tudo bem com você? Tá tudo tranquilo, eu quero almoçar. Você quer almoçar? Eu tô fraca. Fica tranquila, eu conversei com o Lindenberg, a gente vai conversar de novo. Ele tá te tratando bem? Don't worry, the news has got it, alright? Like, I know you might be scared that you're gonna die, but the news has got this handled, okay? who sounds weak and exhausted as she sends a message to her family telling them that she loves them. Olha, é, você tá precisando mandar um recado para sua mãe, alguma coisa? Eu, eu queria saber como ela tá, como meus familiares estão. Tá tudo bem com eles. Tá tudo tranquilo. Um beijo minha mãe pro meu pai. Pode fazer uma... com eles. Pode falar de novo. Dude, this Mande is um so fucked up, man. Oh my god, eu, eu this is fucked up. Eu queria falar pra minha mãe que eu amo ela. Pro meu pai também. <sighs> 
in what might be the worst moment of the entire call, Luis accidentally speaks over her at one point, before his producer clearly tells him to get her to repeat that line, in a shameless attempt at getting a good soundbite for their story. Oh my god. Tá tudo Pode fazer uma... Luis's stunt was indescribably unprofessional. Yeah, sorry about that. Didn't hear you. Didn't hear you uh, say the goodbye message to your mom for ratings. You want to hit me with that again? You know, so that, so that everybody can pick it up. Wow, the dude is literally just doing like you could tell in his face he's doing this because he knows it's going to be have good ratings as he had inserted himself into hostage negotiations <clears throat> that he was utterly unprepared to take on. And though his words didn't immediately lead to any escalations from Lindenberg, the effects of this interview were nothing shy of devastating. Just one day prior, Lindenberg had seen his work on TV for the very first time. And now, with this interview, it fully sank in just how important he was. For the oh first time God. in his life, all eyes were on him. He was the main character of the biggest story transpiring in all of Brazil. And now, he was inspired to write another chapter. From here, Lindenberg would continue his antics at the window, using these opportunities to interact with the cameras and hold the media's attention, while using Eloa as a human shield to prevent police snipers from firing at him. As at one point, he forces her to use tied together sheets to lift up food from negotiators below. All the while, he's looming ominously behind her. And this wasn't solely for the cameras either, as by this point, the audience wasn't just watching at home, but many had gathered outside the apartment to watch the action unfold in person. <clears throat> and this feeling the dude at this point, I mean, <clears throat> I say this all the time. I mean, to be fair, a lot of people say this all the time. Uh, I, they, I, I feel like they've gotten better at it, but like making uh, mass shooters like taking mass shooters and then just like putting them on the news, making them the biggest deal of the entire country, you know, it's not good because all it's going to do is just see all these other fucking crazy people are going to see this and be like, that could be me. I could be that guy. I could be the one on the news that everyone's talking about. I could have a documentary made about me, you know? <clears throat> treating it like some sort of public spectacle. And all while this was happening, police were trying desperately to continue their negotiations. But by this point, Lindenberg was- Well, now don't they say like, um, what do they say? They just say like person of interest or something. I, I forget what they do. They just say like a, a generalized term to refer to these people instead of, naming them or giving them any publicity was far too distracted by all this attention as he would even hop onto another live interview shortly after todos amigos estão dizendo o pessoal que te conhece também está falando que você sempre foi calmo sempre foi trabalhador sempre foi um cara legal que o que você está fazendo hoje deve ser um surto que você está passando uma crise emocional muito séria mas você de qualquer maneira mesmo em crise você está se segurando você está fazendo as coisas ah, com, com um certo critério você está liberando as pessoas você não está fazendo mal para ninguém então já dá um final para essa história que seja todo mundo são e salvo inclusive você inclusive você while on air. Is she empathizing with him? Is she empathizing with him? What? The host herself didn't just ask Lindenberg questions, but she began actively trying to negotiate Iloa's release, despite, again, having no authority and no training for this kind of Oh my god, these people are so dumb! Event. I hate news, man! You will give the two revolvers to her. You will take the bullets and give them in the hand of Iloa. You're giving him commands? Take the bullets out of the gun, give the gun to her, and walk out. Are are you gonna use Jedi mind tricks on him? What do you what do you fucking expect's gonna happen? Exactly, but I won't give the order and I won't tell you what's going to happen. 
Tudo bem, mas você vai descer e a gente vai deixar isso aqui claro para o Brasil inteiro. Você está dizendo que você vai descer desarmado, completamente indefeso, com as mãos para cima, ou seja, você... You are giving them commands. Are you... How stupid can you be? The dude with the gun. You are telling him what to do. The dude who snaps like a fucking twig when anyone says the wrong thing. You are telling him what to do. That is the worst thing to do to those type of people. Is tell them what to do. Wow, man. Wow. <clears throat> She's not even negotiating. She's just telling him. Vai se render sem nenhuma resistência para que as coisas terminem em paz. É isso. Confirma para gente. Confirma para o Brasil inteiro isso. Tá confirmado. Na melhor hora eu vou fazer isso. It was evident from both interviews that these reporters were not taking this case as seriously wow. as they should be, failing to understand just how violent Lindenberg was and just how quickly he could become enraged. And if it wasn't obvious just how twisted the media's perception of this case had become, they would then go on to air a segment with their trusted legal consultant, oh, who gave his expert opinion on how he believed God. this case would end. They're making it a reality show, man. Dude, that, that's, this is, this is the fucking problem. With people. I'm pulling a Joker moment. Society. I'm pulling society right now. <clears throat> they all they care about is ratings, man. That's all they fucking care about, man. Ademar Gomes, né? Vamos falar do que espera o Lindenberg. They're gonna start betting money soon, dude. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they have. I'm sure there's people out there. Yo, how much you want to bet that he's gonna kill her? You know? Yeah, let's get Dr. Phil out here. Boa tarde, viu, doutora Ademar. Prazer tê-la aqui é novamente. Prazer. E com a sua experiência, nos orientar aí sobre o que vai acontecer daqui para frente, para que a gente possa ter uma ideia. Bom, claro. eu sou muito otimista, né? Uhum. Eu espero que isso termine assim em pizza, né? E num uhum. casamento futuro entre ele uhum. e a namorada. Yeah, maybe they can work it out. I mean, come on, come on. I'm pretty sure everyone has dealt with a moment in their relationship where the guy ends up holding his girlfriend hostage, causing a mass panic. I, it happens. It happens, you know, and it's fine. Apaixonada dele, né? Ele tá passando uma fase momentânea, né? Ele também tem perdido a motivação de viver porque... He's going through a phase because he's a young boy? Oh my God. Dude, take away this guy's legal license. They say he was a lawyer? Take away his fucking license, man. He's as dumb as bricks. Full certainty and conviction. Oh, I'm, I can, oh, I'm sure. Sure, nothing With bad's With a reporter theorizing that this would all end in... <clears throat> Boys will be boys. With a couple having a meal and reconciling their differences that's before what eventually he said. going on to get. That's so. That's so true. That's exactly what he said. Ah, it's just. Ah, oh, he's just being a guy. You know. Come on. Married, as this was all just a phase for the young man and his passionate girlfriend. And they somehow made things even worse as the host would follow this segment up by stating that Lindenberg was still going to have to answer for his crimes before running down the list of every single charge that he was going to face. A gente tem a informação que ele vai responder aos crimes de sequestro e invasão de domicílio, disparo e porte ilegal de arma de fogo. Ele deve ter um alívio na pena porque ele não tem antecedentes criminais. He should have a lighter. You're trying to. You're trying to plea for a, a lighter sentence for, for the guy? You really want to go down there? You really, you really want to put that on news for everyone to see? You're empathizing right now. You're empathizing with him. Why is not a single person talked about the victim here? Isn't that strange? How no one has said one fucking thing about the victim? At all. Ele é réu primário e a pena para sequestro seria de um a três anos. This obviously only made the situation even more helpless in Lindenberg's mind, as she was essentially telling him that no matter what happens from here, even if it were to all end peacefully, 
His life was already essentially over based on the crimes he had already committed. And this wasn't the only thing his TV was telling him. As mentioned previously, these news crews were on the scene 24-7, watching and listening to everything that the police were doing all the while. And as a result, they would overhear officers discussing their plans on how they were going to attempt to end the situation. To which, incredibly, these stations would proceed to air this information in real time, meaning that everything the police were trying to do to help Eloa would be heard by Lindenberg well Dude, I, like, when I think that they can't get dumber, somehow they do it. Before they would attempt to carry it out. <clears throat> and he would see it all too, as due to the constant live coverage outside their window, he would be able to see any officer attempting to approach the door or the windows. The media was not only making Lindenberg feel invincible, <laughs> but they were quite literally making him untouchable, as whenever the police would make plans, he would hear it on the TV and simply adjust his course to ensure that they wouldn't capture him. Whatever it's all the about the views, sadly. The uh, yeah. Yeah, and it still is. It always will be, guys. It always will be. That's coming from someone whose job it is to have views. It's always going to be about the views, baby. Police did. No matter Lindenberg what. Lindenberg was watching over them all the while. Lives don't mean and so shit. so they had to be extra diligent and avoid doing anything rash to keep the situation stable. But as another long day came to an end, and the sun rose on the fourth morning of this ordeal, they would proceed to do the exact opposite. Wait, what? Following her release from the apartment, Nayara had been recovering in private away from the media, trying her best to grapple with the situation that she had just endured, as well as dealing with the fear of what might happen to her closest friend. However, on the morning of Thursday the 17th, a pair of unexpected visitors would arrive at her home. Please, for the love of God, please. Standing at her door were two police officers that had been working Eloa's case who requested that Nayara come with them in order to help assist with their negotiations. Apparently, that morning, Lindenberg had agreed to facilitate Eloa's release, but only on the condition that Nayara and Douglas meet the two outside of the apartment and walk with them down into police custody. This was due to the fact that Lindenberg had become paranoid of being shot by officers, but having Nayara and Douglas there would essentially provide a shield for him. Ah, uh, I don't think this is gonna go good. And so the police agreed. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I think he wants them back so he could shoot, shoot some, so he could do a little shoot But some. by this point, Nayara had no idea that this deal <clears throat> had ever been made and that she was now being driven back to the kidnapping site where she would soon have to meet- God, that's so fucked up, man. She doesn't even know? Meet her captor face to face yet again. That's and there so was little to no time for her to react upon her arrival, as she was almost immediately thrust into negotiations. And so the I don't trust as Nayara and Douglas I don't began trust their at trek all. up to the home. Though almost immediately, Lindenberg had a change of heart and began yelling to negotiators that he no longer wanted to do this as he was nervous about Douglas being there. Instead, insisting that Nayara come up to the unit alone, where oh he would then open the door God. and she would take Eloa's hand, and the three would walk out together. Based on this behavior, uh. it was obvious that Lindenberg wasn't to be trusted, as he had already backed <clears> off <throat> the original deal. Plus, part of his deal was that no police officers would be allowed in the building, meaning that there was no backup for Nayara, making the whole thing far too dangerous to even consider. And yet, the negotiators Dog. agreed anyway. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're joking. You are fucking j How is everyone this fucking dumb? Everyone here is dumb. How? Anyway, and gave Nayara the call to walk up those stairs and approach the door alone. 
And so, with no backup whatsoever, the pressure of her friend's life on her shoulders, the police officers talking in her ear, and the hundreds of thousands of people watching at home, she felt as if she had no choice but to walk up those stairs step by step, until she stood just feet away from the door, where she waited to see Eloa. Though when the door was open, it wasn't she her. was instead met with the sight of Lindenberg, who reached out his arms, grabbed Nayara's hand, and pulled her inside shutting the door behind them. And with- What? Who would have ever guessed that would happen? Who could have guessed? The cops literally just gave him a new hostage for free. That Nayara was a hostage once more. This whole sequence has the to be- The cops literally saved the girl, took her from her house, and just put her right back in the same situation. How fucking dumb, how dumb do these cops have to feel after this? Oh, God. One of the worst handlings of a hostage <clears throat> situation that I've ever seen. Even having Nayara at the scene to begin with was questionable enough. As remember, she was only 15 years old at the time, oh and she had God. just survived this traumatic experience only one day before. But sending her up there alone with no Dude, if she dies, I'm gonna shocking. fucking lose it. And you might think that after all of this, the news stations would finally just back off and stop intruding on the case. As clearly things- Okay, no, no. I would never think that. Are you kidding me? Dude, news stations would never back off. This is, this is prime meat for them. And they're on prime time right now, dude. Of course. Dude, they're gonna, they're gonna triple down, dude. They don't give a fuck. Things were becoming more and more dire. However, they only became more obsessed, as Nayara's recapture only boosted their ratings even higher and garnered the case a whole new level of notoriety that they just needed to exploit. And so, these reporters began oh calling God. the unit repeatedly, doing anything they could in an attempt to speak to Lindenberg. Though even when he wouldn't answer, they would still try to speak to him directly over their broadcast. Que a gente podia, quem sabe aproveitar esse momento que a gente sabe que os, que os três estão assistindo aqui o programa e eles estão bem. Que assim que o Lindenberg ele confirmou isso aqui para nossa produção, eles estão bem, estão tranquilos, estão só esperando o momento certo. Pedir para uma das meninas, quem sabe ou ele mesmo, desse um sinal agora aqui na janela para mostrar para todo mundo que está tudo bem, que está ok e que essa história vai acabar o mais rápido que todo mundo espera. Why are they just constantly talking out of their ass, thinking that they know what's going to happen? Every time I see a clip of it, they're just talking about everything's going to be fine. He's just, at, at any moment, he's just going to walk out and be happy. Everyone's going to be fine. Espera, se os três puderem, um deles, dar um sinal, um acenar, fazer alguma coisa para mostrar para todo mundo, para deixar todo mundo mais calmo. Instructing him to give specific signals to show that he was hearing them. Both the media and Lindenberg were stretching his 15 minutes of fame for as long as they possibly could. And by that Friday, the ordeal would reach its 100th hour, making it the most prolonged hostage crisis in Brazil's entire history, with that there being insane, no sign of a resolution man. in sight. And it was obvious that this longevity he's definitely was gonna kill him. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Who's fighting? I feel like that's all he's doing. He's just riding the high until, the, until he gets to kill him. He's riding the high until they run up there, try to stop him, and he kills him. That's why I feel like it's gonna happen. Persona had eventually turned into despondency as he grew more and more exhausted, with his words alluding to the possibility that he was finally going to snap. And by this point, Brazilian officials were tired of their negotiations anyway and knew that it was time for a different tactic, sending in their special tactical actions group known as GATE. Although due to the cameras on the scene, the team knew that they couldn't just scale up the wall and enter through <clears throat> the window, since Lindenberg would be able to see the whole thing unfolding on his TV. And any time he would go to the window, he used Eloa as a human shield meaning that any plan to shoot him from long range without risking the life of Eloa was nearly impossible. There was really only one way in, the front door, <laughs> with their plan being to set a charge and breach said door should Lindenberg's behavior escalate, with the camera showing the entire- Dude, all he's gonna do is just shoot him. If he hears cops there, he's just gonna shoot him, like- ...of the setup, 
At one point, they even captured the team secretly raising up a gun to one of the officers. Despite the officers telling Lindenberg that there were going to be no guns involved, though their cover was clearly blown. Oh my God. And so the charge was set and the streets fell silent as all of Brazil watched on, waiting to see what would happen next. Na tarde de hoje, um documento foi entregue, também um colete. Um minuto ao senhor, doutor. Nós estamos assistindo um ritual, o ritual final desse episódio, o ritual que precede a libertação das duas reféns, das duas adolescentes, e a entrega um barulho lá no local. Aconteceu um disparo, Percival. Um barulho, exatamente, é um barulho de disparo. Houve, uma, houve um disparo lá dentro. Aconteceu. I just love how the media is just like, yeah, I know they're trying to sneak in there. I know he's watching it, but the ratings, though. Come on. Come on. It all happened in the blink of an eye, as in an instant, Gate would blow open the door, which was followed by a puff of smoke and four loud gunshots. The scene is hectic for a minute, until suddenly, we see Nayara stumble out of the door, bleeding heavily from her face, where she falls into the arms of an officer. Then, a stretcher is taken into and out of the room, with Eloa strapped to it. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, if only this could have been avoided. If only there was some way this could have been avoided. As she is rushed down the stairs and taken into an ambulance. And even at this point, these news crews just couldn't help themselves as they stuck their cameras in the window of that Dude, fucking disgusting pieces of shit, man. Oh, God. Oh. This is making me sick, dude. This is just making me sick. Very same ambulance where rescue workers were desperately trying to save Eloa's life. In the fray, Lindenberg had been struck by a rubber bullet and pulled from the unit where police piled on top of him, thus finally bringing the crisis to an end. Wow. Yeah, I know, rubber bullets, right? Rubber bullets, they use rubber bullets. I mean, I guess they were trying to be safe because the girls were in there, but like, bruh, just kill the guy at this point. Like, fuck, fucking just kill him, man. I don't but care. Not before he would fuck fire him. his weapon, three times. You are fucking joking me. One shot would hit Nayara's hand, with a bullet traveling directly through it and then striking her in the face, while Eloa was struck twice, once in the groin and once directly in the head. Despite being given immediate medical attention, Eloa Pimento fell into a coma. And though she fought bravely for many days, she was eventually pronounced brain dead before she would ultimately pass away. Her funeral was held days later where over 30,000 people would pay their respects for the girl whose kidnapping many had watched on their household TVs. In the days that followed, Nayara would make a full recovery and she would later go on to speak out about her story and how she was pressured by law enforcement to revisit the scene that day with her accounts leading to heavy criticism against the officers who were working her case. Yeah, she deserves so much better, dude. Like, that's gotta be so fucking traumatizing, man. Uh... And it wasn't just for that reason either, as her testimony also exposed just how poorly planned out Gate's entry of the home actually was. According to officials, the team only entered the building because they had heard a gunshot claiming that Lindenberg had fired first, which prompted them to react. Though it's evident from the footage at the scene and from Nayara's own testimony that this actually wasn't the case, and Lindenberg had only begun shooting as a result of that door being blown open. That's what I'm fucking saying. If they go in there, I said that how many minutes ago? I said that so fucking long ago. If they go in there, guns are blazing, he's just gonna shoot them. And making things even more troubling, despite blowing the door open, it took officers as long as 7 to 15 seconds to enter the apartment, a time span in which Lindenberg would fire all three of his shots. 
It's unclear why they hesitated for so long before they entered the home. Are you scared with your bulletproof vest and your helmet? Bruh, these girls are in there without anything. Dude, just go Rambo on that shit. This is your moment. Like these dudes, like this is your fucking moment to Rambo out. And you're gonna waste it. But they must have known that the blast was going to trigger some sort of reaction from the river. <clears throat> And their decision not only to breach the door in that manner, but also their decision to wait, undoubtedly contributed to the death of Eloa. And truthfully, it's a miracle that Nayara wasn't killed as well, due to their incompetence. Though obviously, it wasn't just law enforcement who had failed Eloa in the situation. It's everybody, with many everybody pointing failed. their fingers at members of the media, especially those who <clears throat> directly interfered with the situation, as their behavior undoubtedly factored into Lindenberg's behavior. Though despite this, none of the journalists ever expressed any regret over their handling of the situation. Of course they didn't, because they got a bunch of money for it. Why would they care? And to my knowledge, none of them faced any form of repercussions. As a result of his many crimes, Lindenberg would be sentenced to 90 plus years in prison. Though due to Brazilian law, the sentence was reduced to just 30 years, making it I'm gonna fucking lose it. I'm gonna fucking lose it, man. Oh, I'm gonna lose it. Oh my god. Likely that he will someday be released from prison. Which, for now, brings us to the end of this tragic story. Though there is one more detail about this case that I just had to mention at the end here, because it somehow makes this story even <clears throat> more bizarre. As just days after Eloa's death, her father Aldo would disappear. Throughout the entire hostage crisis, Aldo was- We live in a fucking simulation, man. <laughs> we live in a fucking simulation. This isn't real. There's no way this is real. Essentially invisible to the public, as the press was forbidden from interviewing any of Eloa's family. But as a result of Nayara's recapture, Aldo had become so stressed that he collapsed and was rushed to the hospital. There, he would make a full recovery, but when he was carried away from the scene, the cameras would capture his image as he lay on a stretcher, with a photo being broadcast all over the news that day. Oh, that's great. Where a detective at home just so happened to recognize him. Wait, what? As it turns out, Aldo was a wanted man, having been accused of murdering at least two people back in the 90s as part of a Brazilian gang, one of which was even a- Dude, this is- what is happening? A police chief. And what? from that moment, he had been on the run ever since, with Aldo actually being an alias <clears throat> for his real name, Everaldo. During this whole situation, Eloa's father was quite literally a killer on the run, and he had been blending into his new life for over a decade, until the moment what his face was broadcast is all over Brazil, which in turn caused him to flee the area immediately after. Though eventually, after a full year later, Everaldo would finally be captured and sent to prison, marking the end of one of the most shocking television cases we've ever explored, and what may very well be the darkest moment in television history. That is the craziest fucking story I've ever heard in my life. Now it's time to walk away I hope you enjoyed your stay Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way You know I will miss you I hope you return Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.